Hello everyone. Radio frequency ablation for chronic joint pain is a fairly common treatment that is used to desensitize painful joints and alleviate some forms of chronic pain. One of the commonest joints that is treated is the facet joint. Firstly, we're going to discuss the facet joints. Let's talk a little bit uh, about the facet joints themselves. The facet joints are um, the commonest area that we, have, we as pain specialists focus on because the facet joints are the commonest cause of the commonest pain that we treat, which is spinal pain. And of course, out of the spine, the cervical, the thoracic and the lumbar spine, the lumbar spine is the commonest uh, area of spinal pain that we treat. And then following that is the cervical spine. Like anything, when we talk about uh, a problem, uh, we need to be able to uh, back it up with some form of scientific guidance and evidence, and that's what I'm going to do here with the uh, with the facet joints. Uh, so let's have a look at a at a paper published in uh, the Journal of Orthopedics. This was published in 2020, focused on the anatomy and pathology of facet joints. So what are the facet joints? Well, they're called synovial joints. They're the only joints within the spine. Um, they are symmetrical, which means there's one on each side. Um, they have um, a synovium, which is the in, inner part of the joint, and um, they have a fibrous capsule surrounding the joint. Um, what do they do? Well, they have two functions really. One is uh, uh, stability, uh, support, and the other is uh, motion. Uh, they're called motion segments. That's where the two vertebral bodies, one sits uh, on top of another and they are connected with symmetrical, one on each side, facet joints. Now the facet joints are different in the uh, spine. If you have a look at the cervical facet joints, what you will notice is the cervical facet joints are basically uh, one joint fits on top of the other, forward facing, which allows much movement of the cervical spine. And then as you move down the body, uh, down the spine, the, the facet joints change in their direction. They still allow forward motion, but they're a different type of a joint. Um, so um, it's a motion segment. It allows spinal movement. And of course, it's not the only form of stability of the spine. And this is an important part of what we talk about. Um, there are posterior uh, ligaments, and this is called the posterior ligament complex, which is, which is critical in stabilizing the spine and the joints. Um, let's have a quick look at, uh, that's just a, a graphical representation of the facet joint. There's the, uh, inf um, uh, there's the top part of the facet joint, the bottom part of the facet joint. Um, there's the uh, synovium and f uh, synovial space and then of course there's that outer capsule. Um, the, the commonest cause of facet joint pain uh, is as you would expect arthritis, arthrosis, osteoarthritis, some degeneration of the joint. And as previously mentioned just because the joint is arthritic doesn't mean it's causing pain uh, which is another discussion. Uh, but any form of arthritis, so rheumatoid arthritis, um, osteoarthritis, which is of course one of the commoner causes of facet pain. Um, let's have a look at a couple of scans just briefly to give you a flavor of facet joints and how facet joints can trigger pain. Um, this is what we call a PET scan, um, where uh, you can see this area on the left, there is what we call increased uptake in the facet joint, um, and uh, this signifies um, synovitis, so inflammation of the uh, synovium, and this was uh, uh, in a patient with gout. Um, so any forms of arthritis can trigger um, facet-mediated pain. This is a scan with a big lump over there, and you can see that lump again on the facet joint, and this is a uh, cyst of a facet joint. Uh, what does this show? Again, this shows a cyst. Um, you can see this big area protruding into the spinal cavity. Um, and if you have a look at it on some of the CT scans on the right hand side, it looks like it's calcified. So they have called this a calcified synovial cyst. Uh, similarly here, 
um, you can see uh, a big area at the front of the facet joint showing uh, some form of cystic structure. Uh, and the, um, the diagram C shows that it's changed in consistency and um, there's likely to be some blood in that facet joint. So facet joints can uh, become cystic in structure. Uh, this is a cervical facet joint. As you can see, if I'm looking at that side on, you can see how it slopes front to back, which allows a lot of the motion within the cervical spine, the neck. Um, and this has also got some kind of crystalline deposit or calcification within the facet uh, joint. Um, I'm going to skip through that one. Um, I'm going to skip through that one because that's the uh, cervical area. We'll come to that at another point. Uh, and sometimes the facet joints can become septic uh, and arthritic, so, so infections, have some kind of bacteria causing um, the inflammation. Not very common. Um, I've, I've, in, my, in my studies and, and uh, practice, I've never seen a, an infected uh, facet joint. Tumors can occur in the facet joints. Um, this is a uh, osteoid osteoma, so that facet joint is completely different to the facet joint on the opposite side. Um, so they can have some uh, other causes of facet pain. Uh, some of them can be quite um, uh, medically um, uh, concerning, quite uh, medically aggressive. Uh, tumors. Uh, again, I've never seen a facet joint tumor. It's not to say it doesn't occur. They do occur. They are rare. Um, and this is a bone cyst that shows uh, a local destruction of the facet joint as well. So I think I'll just stop it there. I just wanted to give you a flavor of the facet joints, how important they are. They're there for motion. They're there for um, uh, stability. And uh, it's a vital part of what we do as pain specialists in terms of treating uh, uh, spinal pain, in terms of treating cervical pain, thoracic pain, but of course back pain. Uh, there are two facet joints for every spinal articulation. So in other words, one vertebra sits on top of the next vertebra with two facet joints on each side. And there are facet joints in the cervical spine, there are facet joints in the thoracic spine, there are facet joints in the lumbar spine. We're focusing on the lumbar spine, so low back pain, low back facet joint pain. Now I must remind you that there are many causes of low back pain and we're talking about one, it, albeit one of the commoner causes of chronic back pain. This is not acute back pain, we're talking about chronic, persistent, uh, debilitating back pain. On the right you can see uh, the spinal vertebra sitting one on top of the other and you can see these little articulations which one vertebra sits on top of the other. So let's have a look at the diagram on the left. You have uh, the ribs which you can quite easily see. Um, there is the 12th rib, there is the 11th rib. So below the 12th rib or at the 12th rib is the uh, T12 vertebral body. Below the T12 vertebral body is L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, and then that combines and um, uh, connects with the sacrum. So let's have a look at it from the left-hand side. Between T12 and L1 is the T12 L1 facet joint. Between L1 and L2 is the L1 2 facet joint. Between L2 and L3 is the L2 3 facet joint and so on until you get down to the L5 S1 facet joint which is the facet joint uh, that connects the lower lumbar vertebra with the sacrum. So again just a little video clip to show you. Uh, you can see the facet joints side on. Those are the nerves, very complex. We'll get to the nerves at a later point, but I just wanted to give you a, a representation of what we're actually talking about and what we're dealing with when uh, talking about facet joint pain. I hope that's been informative.